welcome to Beads Jar. My name is Billy, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make this anklet bracelet using macrame weave and adding in the Magatama beads from Mayuki. You'll also need some Fevy Quick scissors and two pairs of pliers in order to connect our fastener here. And I've just chosen a large lobster claw and some leather ends along with five millimeter jump rings. Let's get started. When you're starting your project, you want to pre-cut two lengths of the S long cord that will give you about five centimeters longer than the toe of your ankle. What you want to do now is use the Fevy Quick and you're gonna put a dab of glue onto the two threads at the end. So get them even lengths, pop your glue on. I'd recommend not working directly on your bead mat so that if any glue goes on, it doesn't cover your bead mat. I've placed those into the leather end and using my flat nose pliers, I'm gonna close the sides over the ends. So I want to crush one side over first so I've flattened that down and then I'm closing the other side over the top of that. You then need to cut two meters of Eslon, so one continuous length of two meters. And we're gonna create a knot next to our leather end. So you can either do that by preparing your knot and then threading the leather end through or you can place it round and then try and create the knot, whichever is best for you. So I've put my knot there and what I now want to do is add another drop of Fevy Quick next to the leather end and we push that up to the leather end. So this is the longer length, the two meter length that I've halved, and this is gonna form our macrame weave. To hold your project, I would highly recommend to get a bulldog clip and a board and then you can place your leather end under the bulldog clip. In this video, you eagle-eyed observationalist will see I haven't used as much thread as I've just mentioned. This is because I'm just showing you the project at the start and then I'll move on to the finish. So it just makes it easier to show you how to make the weave. Place the two central threads in the middle and you just want to put a piece of sellotape on them so that they don't keep moving around. You need a bit of slack to pass the threads underneath so as long as you can get two fingers or three fingers underneath this thread that's a good idea. And then we can start our macrame weave. In order to do this you're going to form a D with the right hand thread that's going to come over the top of the other two running parallel down. You then take your other side and create a C and then you bring that up through the D and out to the side. That creates our first macrame knot here. Bring the other side, so we're working from the opposite side now, so the C and that's coming over the two that are running parallel down. The D over the top and then under and behind the two parallel so it's coming out of the C shape and that will create your second macrame weave on our project. And then we do another D and the C coming behind. So 
So we're just getting our project started with a small section of macrame weave. Now I can start adding my Magamatama bead on. So I'm going to pick up first to the right. So I thread the bead on here. Create the D. And I'm just getting ready to pass the C underneath. Take that up. You don't want to pull too tight on your macrame project, but you're just getting it so that the magamatama stays out to the side. And now we're going to work from the C side. So we go from the C to the D. We do another D. So we're back to C. And when we're back to the C, we're now going to pick up another Magamatama bead. So that's on the C. And then we go across and under. And we're working from the D. So it's D over. C over and we're on our third macrame so then we start on pick up again. Pick up a new bead and continue. So you're just going to keep going down your project working from side to side and adding in your beads. So now we're back on this side. So you're growing your project all the way down from the start to the end. And you need to make sure that obviously this will wrap around your anklet and that you have enough give when you bend your foot back and forth. Most people try and make their anklets far too small and then when they put them on, they pull off their fasteners. So I've got the length that I need and now I'm going to be fin finishing this end off and attaching my fastener. So I've come all the way down with my thread and I've just done a knot with the 2 meter length that was crossing over. So I just want to tie my knot here. I'm just going to use my Fevi Quick and I'm going to put a knot, uh, sorry, a dab of glue onto that knot there. Allow your knot to dry and then you want to use your scissors and be very aware at this point you are taking the two sides off that you've been creating your macrame weave with. So we're going to remove the two threads that the macrame weave was being made with but we're keeping our two in order to attach our other side of the fastener. So you just allow for that to dry, uh, dry and then you're trimming that away. So we let our thread, sorry, we let our glue dry and I've cut away the thread and now we're going to be adding some more glue and adding the end on to the opposite side. I'm going to cut this thread down so I'm going to leave about 5mm so it hides inside the leather end. Add your glue onto those two. And place that inside. And then you back to using your flat nose pliers to fold over the leather end. 
Whoops. So now we have the two ends on and we can put our lobster claw clasp on there. Open your jump rings. So in order to open your jump ring, I find the best thing is to hold one side of the jump ring and then use the second pair of pliers and I'm pushing one side away and bringing one towards me and then I'm gonna hook that through the leather end and also onto my lobster clasp. So whilst it's open, we've put the two ends on and then I'm gonna close that back. So in order to close my jump ring, I'm just reversing the way I opened it. And we're in. The second side, we just have the jump ring. Make sure it's closed and then you've got your fastener completed. And you've finished your anklet. Thank you for watching our tutorial today. If you've enjoyed it, remember to give us a big thumbs up and if you wish, you can subscribe now to our YouTube channel to watch all of our latest designs and creations. Until next time, bye bye.